afternoon. Hello, Claire. How are you? I'm very good. You? Very well, thank you. Very well. Good indeed. to see you. Yes. It's been a while. It has been a little while. But it's always good to see you. Oh, very kind. So we're going to leave your wonderful offices here. I love it. Days like today, this must be a beautiful place to work. It's not bad. It's not bad. Fridays is a bit noisy because at the local aerodrome, Sywell, we have um, the um, aeroplanes go out to practice. Oh, okay. So Friday's a little bit noisy. But then we get to see a preview of all our air shows. Excellent. So it's not bad. Have your lunch out in the car park? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so, well, Ellsby & Co, part of my start, in a way, helped me start in, in my career in business when um, when Carl was my uh, mentor. mentor for the Prince's Trust. I know, that 18, was a while ago. 18 yeah. years ago. Yes. I've put on a few, uh, I've gained a few chins <laughs> since then, I'll tell you. But, um, well, it, was off, it obviously worked. Yeah. <laughs> well, but we're not, we're not going to talk too much about Ellsby & Co today. Not no. that I don't want to, no, but no. specifically about FSB. Yes. Because um, Jennifer Thomas, no relation, but Jennifer... Is, uh, I've sort of built up a bit of a relationship with over the last sort of 12, 18 months. Yes, yeah. And sort of seeing the really good work that FSB are doing. And then obviously you've, you've been appointed there. So tell, tell me about that role. Okay. Um, yeah, I was elected area lead on the 1st of January. So I've been involved with the FSB since I first started up my business. So 26 years ago. Um, and that was before Carl joined me. So it's when I was on my own. And at that point, I thought the FSB was very much about networking. And at that point, I wanted to get out and meet other like-minded business people because yeah. I was on my own. Um, and also, I was quite interested in their member benefits, particularly their legal helpline, which has been um, yeah, a good benefit that I've had over, over the years. But gradually, over time, I've just got more and more involved. Um, and I was approached last November to ask whether I would stand for election. And it was at that point then when I realised actually the FSB is much more about lobbying in government. Yeah. Um, and it has a very powerful voice. And rather than just being one little business owner, um, together with another 160,000 uh, members in the UK, we are the most powerful uh, business member-led organisation and uh, can lobby government, and national that, and local. And that's, that's a really key point because I, I didn't realise just how powerful, if that's the right yeah, word, yeah, just how powerful yeah. the FSB is. Yes. Um, and I know you were you were down at the Houses of Parliament with Andrew Lua a yes. couple of months ago. Yeah, loved that. That's my, yes, absolutely loved that. Um, so And it was just nice to be able to go meet MPs in their environment um, but actually feel that you were listened to. Yeah. But also, it was reassuring in all these uncertain times with Brexit and everything, that the government is actually still going on on a day-to-day -day basis and decisions are still being made. Yeah, I, I, was, um, I was lucky enough to be invited by Semlep to, oh, yes, uh, to the yeah. event um, a couple of weeks ago and Andrew Lua hosted it. And I got to spend some time with him and um, he, he impressed me actually because yeah. he's um, he actually comes from a publishing background. I'm not sure if you, you know that or not, but he does. Um, he came across as genuinely caring. Yeah. And look, I haven't got I don't know loads of MPs, um, but he did impress me. Yeah. Um, are you allowed to share with us any examples of how lobbying has either worked or, pro or projects like where you've got feedback from your membership locally? Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, a big win we've just had. In the last two weeks is all to do with poor payment practices. Uh, there was a survey done a number of years ago now um, of the 160,000 members and 84% of small business owners came back and said that um, uh, they were subject to poor payment practices, in other words not getting paid on time and that was having a direct effect on their business. So for a number of years the, the FSB has been campaigning but they ramped it up just before the spring statement and started a Twitter campaign which was called, if I get this right, Fair Pay, Fair Play. Um, and the idea, the, the, the asks, if you like, of the campaign were threefold. Uh, one 
was to strengthen uh, the, the uh, payment code. Mm -hmm. One was to uh, strengthen the teeth of the uh, business, Small Business Commissioner. But probably the most effective one, I think, is to make boards of directors accountable for poor payment practices. And uh, two weeks ago, it was announced in Parliament by the Small Business Minister that they were actually going to implement the reforms as suggested by the FSB. So um, that will help loads and loads of businesses, um, you know, nationally and locally. It's not a silver bullet, obviously, these things never are, but it'll make a big difference. And what was the, tell me through the timeline of when that questionnaire um, went out and, and right forward to a couple of weeks ago. Okay, well, um, I mean, I'm not actually sure just, when just, the questionnaire just. went out, but I would, I used to, as a member, I would fill in these questionnaires. So I think, and they're always asking about poor payment practices. So it's probably about eight or nine years, I would say. So it's been a long-term campaign. But the Twitter campaign started just after I was elected. So that would have been uh, January, February time. Yeah. And so what are we now? First of July. Um, so it's been a big difference. I mean, another campaign that uh, is running is all about cash, access to cash. Uh, so we're all aware that uh, there have been glitches in, um, in bank online banking when you've tried to go online and get your cash and you can't, or you've tried to save your balances and you can't. And it's so important that we have to have access to cash. So the campaign at the minute is to uh, make sure the regulator has teeth so that they can uh, ensure that there's a good cash coverage across the UK. To make sure that banks and building societies actually provide some training to people to set up online banking. Um, a lot of elderly people still rely on cash people go into town on a Saturday morning to cash their paychecks and retail uh, businesses and high streets find that cash is really crucial because it increases footfall so um, and we cannot risk a you know a complete shutdown of, of uh, digital so that's a big campaign that we've got at the minute um, I think the hashtag on that is save our cash points and and if you Going back to a point you made earlier about uh, 160,000 members in yes, that's nationally. Yes. Um, how many of those are roughly are in Northamptonshire? Like 2,000. Wow, 2,000. Yeah. So I, along with a colleague, um, represent uh, four and a half thousand businesses uh, uh, in Northamptonshire, Rutland, and Leicestershire. Luckily for me, because I live in Northampton, um, I have a, a colleague, Jenny Cross, who lives in Leicestershire. And so she represents the Leicestershire, and then we sort of split the lovely um, uh, county of Rutland, uh, region of Rutland between us. So yeah, four and a half thousand businesses in those three areas. And if, if we just go back to the 2,000 that are in Northamptonshire, yeah. um, is there a restriction in terms of size or entry level to, to be a member of the FSB? Um, 249 employees. So that's quite big, yeah. and that represents 99% of businesses in the UK. And that so that's is, the maximum? Yes. Yeah. And so, um, uh, but those 99% of businesses will employ 60% um, of uh, private sector workers. Yeah. So it's huge uh, uh, potential for membership, um, and uh, it, it's very easy to join. As I say, I joined initially for the benefits of uh, which I think the important ones now are um, tax inquiry, insurance, which is crucial, and um, cyber protection is a new yeah. one. So they do keep adding more benefits to it, but legal helpline, tax helpline, or people might be interested in just joining just for the networking opportunities. And I don't know if you, if you can comment on this, but either personally or from an FSB perspective, but I've got to say Brexit. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, the FSB is a non-political organisation, apolitical, so it doesn't actually have an opinion either way. When it, when uh, originally it uh, um, um, sent a survey out to members, half said they wanted to leave and half said they wanted to join. So we can't really have an opinion on it itself. I have my opinion, but that has 
changed actually. Um, but what it can say is that we want an orderly exit because okay. it's, it, we think it is going to happen, but we just want it orderly. We cannot have uncertainty as far as business is concerned. <coughs> Do you, um, I'm not going to, unless you want to divulge, I'm not going to push you on no, your I one, but. But uh, do you think that other people uh, in the business community have, have had a change of opinion? I don't know. I mean, we tend to, it's like the elephant in the room and people just tend not to talk about it. Yeah, right. um, it's one of those subjects that, that people find it can be very divisive. Yeah, so. it's um, the only people that I actually, well, there's, a, there's a handful of people, LinkedIn's a great for discussion around uh, Brexit but I do my personal connections are more um, the only ones that I tend to find that are quite vocal are the ones that are the Remainers yeah. and um, yet when I speak to people in private conversations or you know in smaller smaller gatherings where you can have a really interesting debate yeah. and it's not an argument it's a genuine debate yeah, where some I've come across some Remainers that are actually you know can get a bit upset if, if, if they realise that someone's a Brexiteer and, it, and all of a sudden it can create a bit of an atmosphere. But yes. I've, I've probably met um, more recently, I, I bet there's a good dozen people that have that have changed. Yeah, I, I, that's, I mean, I've personally changed my view. Um, but I, yes, it is the elephant in the room. And I'm from Belfast, so I'm quite used to having, you know, discussing the time of day and the weather and you don't actually discuss, yeah. you know, the real issues. So. Um, but yeah. if we, we put, we, you know, we're not going to change anything. Uh, I don't, well, I don't, I don't, I don't think we're going to change anything between now and October the 31st. But um, if we look back to home, Northamptonshire, yes, very buoyant. It's a great county. So yes. much uh, positivity uh, across a range of sectors. Um, what is there? Is there a standout um, company or project or? Um, something that's happening either this year or next year that, that you're particularly looking forward to? Um, the thing I'm really keen on actually, and I've been I'm actually meeting up with the Northamptonshire bid uh, next week, is the Northamptonshire Forward. Okay. So the whole concept as to what's going to happen with Northampton Time Centre. Okay. Um, is that Rob Purdy? Uh, well, it was Rob Purdy. Okay. Um, he's, uh, he's actually moved to London now, so there's another chap. So I'm meeting the new chap next week. Um, but yes, I'm, I mean, I live in Northampton, lived in Northampton now uh, 20 odd years. And so I'm passionate about the town and uh, there are some really good plans. They were up for uh, consultation. I think the consultation closed yesterday, actually. Um, but they've got some really good plans. Also, there's the whole future of the local government. So that's all up for up for review um, and I've uh, with my FSB hat on I've actually got to understand a bit more about local government I didn't know I knew very little about the local government and what it could the post uh, so that's been really interesting um, so yeah Northampton Forward I think it's a really big project that I hope um, will enthuse people and show that actually there is change and that the high street is going to be taken note of and people, business people particularly have got a big part to play in that. I've got to, um, just just on that point then, Rushton Lakes. Oh, no. Fan or not? Um, I am, I have to say I am, only because we've got an office in Rushton and actually uh, it, it's a great venue. I, I spoke at the Boat House last yeah. week. Uh, on a, uh, doing a cyber protection seminar, fantastic venue. Um, I don't actually have seen, I used to live in Rushton, so I know it quite well, that it's had that much of an impact on the high street because what the high street does is very different to what um, uh, Rushton Lakes is trying to do. I would like to see more independents there. I think the only independent is Magazine Heaven. Well, you, that, that will come, I think, Which in this next wonderful. stage, and there's, yeah. gonna, there's gonna be um, a number of independents, but I can't help but tip my hat off to them. I mean, yeah. I, I'm from that, that part of the county anyway, yeah. but when I've, when I've read some of the negative uh, press about them, 
I find it difficult, but I'm, and I'm not in retail, so I'm probably not best to mm. comment on it, but it's a destination. Of course it is. And people are traveling here that would have perhaps have gone to Milton a Bista Keynes. or a Milton Keynes. And I, and I find it really difficult to believe that Rushton Lakes is going to be taking away significant enough business from the high streets in yeah. a Northampton, for example, or a Wellingborough or a, 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 I don't know, a Daventry. Yeah. Because I just think people that are going there, um, they want to go out for the day, they're going out for that, that destination experience. Yeah. It, that is what the retail's the, what it's all got to be about, hasn't it? The high street. It's about doing something, not really buying something. Yeah. And I think that's what's exciting about Northampton Forward as well. Is that seems to have been taken on board. Yeah, and it, the, the sad thing I think is most people would say that Northampton Town Centre has deteriorated. Yes. So it, on one hand, it, the, the way is only up. Yeah. Sure. But you know, it's interesting that you tell me about Northampton Forward because I hadn't heard about that. Um, but I think if you've got the right people there to, to um, spearhead that, hopefully Northampton Town Centre is going to see some healthier, healthier well, days and so. years ahead. It, it's a really wide consultation process and it's got the university, the police, the, everybody's involved in it. All the local businesses, the Northamptonshire bid as well. So they've got all the right people there. They've just got to actually do something now, mm. actually make it happen. All right. Well, that brings us to an end. Make wow. it happen. Yeah, that, make it happen. That's quite a, a, a good way to end. Claire, Lovely. thank you so much. Yes, you too. All right, you take care. Yeah, you too. Thanks for that. And, um, well, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Send my regards to Carl and the team. I will do. All right. All right, take then. care.